Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. I actually just shot the vlog that y'all are about to see, but uh, on the way home, I found these on the side of the road. These are Bolites. The lighting's not very good in my truck, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, I found these on the side of the road. Beautiful Bolites, there's a bunch of them. Now I don't know much about Bolites, but um, I'm gonna go inside and do some research on these. And see if they're edible. They're not really bruised and blue. Well, let's see. Yeah, I cut them open and I think they might have a bluish tint. So these might not be the edible variety. But um, <clears throat> I've actually never found the edible. I have found one edible variety, Bolete. But I only found one and it was kind of in a contaminated area. So I didn't eat it. And I just actually put it in a little bag up here. Just that the wind could blow around the spores and potentially it'll actually grow out here in the yard. Uh, similar thing with this. This was growing uh, right where somebody had sprayed some herbicide right beside it. And the, and the road was right beside it too. So I'm not, even if these were edible, I wouldn't eat them because I'm kind of worried about some contamination issues there. But uh, yeah, just a really cool find that I wanted to show y'all and I figured I'm not gonna put this, since it's a different scenery out here, I'm not gonna put this at the end, in the middle of the video or anything, but uh, yeah, keep watching. I hope y'all enjoy the vlog of all the other stuff we found. Good morning, everybody. The date is August 20th, 2022. It's Saturday morning, like 9.45 right now. And I'm about to go walking around this old growth forest here seeing if I can find any mushrooms. It's been raining the past couple days. So, look at my dog crawling in there. Fuggle, please don't do that. Anyways, um, gonna go hunt for mushrooms. Me and Tyler were down here last week. Y'all probably actually will see this video before you'll see that one. He's making it his little art project with editing. So, this one's gonna be just a lot more straightforward. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna hunt for mushrooms. Maybe pawpaws. I found some pawpaws last week. And just see what we find. Um, this video is not intended for you, like, for you to use to identify mushrooms or anything. This is just, like, a kind of an adventure vlog for me. I don't want to be the professional that ends up hurting somebody. I take my own risk with these mushrooms. I, I do have a license to forge them in South Carolina. Um, and to sell them, you don't have to have a license just to eat them yourself. But, uh, yeah, just if you're hunting for mushrooms, go look at multiple sources. Don't just look at my video and think that's good and take one mushroom at a time as well. Um, today I'm going to put this up in a tree. I don't know what this is. It's some sort of polypore. Um, I found it close to where I found those Berkeley's polypores. I actually thought it was a giant reishi. But now I don't think that's what it is. But I'm going to stick this up in a tree somewhere. And maybe y'all will see me again. If I find something interesting. I might have found something interesting right now actually. Let's look at this. There were some chanterelles here. Before. And yeah. This is a chanterelle. See the... I know the way you can tell between this and a jack-o'-lantern are its veins. Like this has what's called false gills and see how the, the gills split like that. They split up here at the top. The, the, uh, the jack-o'-lantern mushrooms will be orange, but they won't split. They're, they're true gilled, deep bladed gills, I believe. But uh, yeah, one chanterelle already. I've been here for five minutes. Look at here. This slide's got some old, and I believe they're younger oyster mushrooms. You find oyster mushrooms a lot more in the fall, but you can also find them in the summer. They're always smaller in the summer here, but see there's decurrent gills is what they're called. The gills go right into the stem. 
These are a little old though. I think I'm just gonna leave these here. You know what? I might take some. I'm gonna take these mushrooms and I'm gonna put them on top of other logs that don't have oyster mushrooms on them and then maybe we can spread the spores. We'll see. Another fun though. Pretty. I actually, this is the oyster log I'm at again. I actually forgot to mention, but I actually cut down this tree. There's a stump right here. And it was just something I actually intentionally designed to grow mushrooms because this tree fell into what is a depression that holds water in the wintertime. It's dried right now. And these depressions are really good areas to look for bull eats and chanterelle mushrooms because the reason there's no vegetation here is because this it usually holds water in here up until about late spring and then it ends up drying up but in the summertime you can find these places and they'll have like i said chanterelles and bull eats and some interesting mushrooms popping up um but that's the tree that i fell the idea was to cut it and to have it fall into the water that way this end of the tree wicks up moisture up the tree and hopefully I'll, I'll just get more mushrooms that way because mushrooms like moisture i've actually noticed that a lot of um mushrooms grow like on beaver dams and stuff i'm not sure this might be a turkey tail I think that's a turkey tail i'm not really good at identifying turkey tails i've never actually experimental with them or anything so don't listen to me on that but um yeah just a little experiment i tried there and it seems to work really good so i'm gonna be felling a lot more trees into water bodies because uh i'm getting oyster mushrooms now here first pawpaw for the day that'll be good there's another one over here these are what pawpaw leaves look like I, I actually found a lot of pawpaws the other day on the other video and I kind of freaked out I've always just kayaked and picked up pawpaws or just picked them off the trees um, but this year is the first year I've walked around and actually looked on the ground. But here's another one. That one's really soft. That one's... I'm going to leave that one there. But yeah, keep an eye out for those. It's a little grove right here. I can actually probably come in here and clear some trees in this area. A lot of times pawpaws pop up in areas that have really old growth forests. And you just can't cut down those trees. I'm walking through this switch cane right now because I saw a log that fell over this creek. This is called Beaver Dam Creek. And I think there's oyster mushrooms on it. I need to come back here with a scythe. This is, be careful. <laughs> this is a floodplain area, so I'm gonna see some snakes today for sure. Look at this stuff I'm about to walk through. Yeah, don't. I got these big rubber boots, so don't do this unless you have this. But see that log over there? It's got some sort of mushroom on it. Push through. Here's something interesting. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know what that is. It's got like a partial veil on it right there it's got true gills i'm not sure what this is i don't know i'll leave that here all right let's look at this log yeah these are oyster mushrooms yep down in here. but see how they're always there's often logs growing up over the water that have mushrooms on them so uh really designed that around here but yeah you can see the all these gnats on them these are oysters see the decurrent veins be careful when you're picking oysters in the summertime because there are um false oyster mushrooms that i have seen 
I can't remember. I think they're called a uh, partially veiled, veiled, the veiled oyster mushroom, which I, I can't remember that if that's an edible or not. I've never eaten it. I just eat the true oyster mushroom. But yeah. And maybe these are, like I said, I don't know much about turkey tails. Look how beautiful they are though. These are gorgeous. Yeah, lots of oyster mushrooms. Not often you get to wade into a river to harvest your food. This one's still good. Yeah, I'm going to take some of these home and eat them. So we got one chanterelle and some oyster mushrooms. Um, one thing, if you've ever, if you're hunting chanterelles right now, I would recommend if it's your first time and you only see one like I just saw, don't pick it and eat it because that's not normal. Usually you see chanterelles and there's a bunch of them around. They don't grow clump, but they're they're solitary. But there's usually usually a lot of them, and that's kind of odd that I found just one. I actually found two smaller ones uh, later in the same area after I turned off the camera. But another thing to think about when you're finding chanterelles. But I'm gonna pick some oyster mushrooms. Here's a good example of just a lot of mushrooms growing on one log. There's these, I think these are actually, I, I, like I said, I'm not gonna speak on these turkey toes. Look how, or whatever these are, I'm not gonna speak on them. But look how beautiful they are. Look at those colors. It's like a pinkish purple to them. But uh, this log I have to pass every time I come through here. So I've just been putting all types of mushrooms right on this log and look, like I said, you got these weird things and oyster mushrooms. Just pop, everything's popping out of these logs. Yeah, just an example of what you can do if you start spreading it yourself. And I probably should be careful. Look at all the oysters on there. I should have been here a couple days ago. Watch out, Pete. Oh, I about fell down. <laughs> Look at all those oy old oyster mushrooms. Looks like there's more down here. So those are just those turkey tails, but yeah. You know, I should have came here about two days ago finding all these old oyster mushrooms. Another thing when you're looking for mushrooms, I didn't realize it rained here last night. Um, I live just up the road from this place and it did not rain at my house. But uh, just one thing to keep in mind when you're foraging for mushrooms, wait till it dries out. You don't want to pick mushrooms when they're wet. For some reason people think they need to go like right after the rain nod i like to wait until it's a little bit sunny and the mushrooms can dry out and actually when i pick like these oyster mushrooms i'm gonna go set them in the sun for a little while and they'll i don't know if they i guess they somehow react to the sun the same way that humans do or animals they're spoke their mushrooms are closer to animals than they are plants but uh they soak up vitamin d or they soak up the sun and they make vitamin d i don't know how that works but i know uh that you need to set out your if you set out your mushrooms in the sun for a while you'll get a lot you'll be able to eat them and get more vitamin d from them so i'm gonna go do that but uh yeah i think i just said it i expected to find more woodiers today i didn't find any woodier mushrooms which was weird and i did not expect to find oyster mushrooms but is what it is i'm not mad about oyster mushrooms are good yeah just a weird little fault and some tips check out this massive mushroom this is a bolete yeah see the pores on it this camera doesn't focus very well but yeah and i think this one bruises blue right yep and it's my understanding if it bruises blue, it is not edible. So somebody let me know if that's not the case. I've only found one here that I think is edible, but I didn't I didn't actually eat it because I want to spread the spores. So I've tied it up in a bag back here and hopefully it'll spread. But yeah, big old bolete. I find these everywhere back here. 
I'm gonna drop it off again. Cool little find. Here's the little reishi that me and Tyler found last week. It was teeny tiny in the other one, but it's about doubled in size, so. Yeah, you can find a lot of reishi mushrooms this time of year too, if you're into that. So I'm standing in the uh, oxbow lakes. I talked about these. They're dried up oxbow lakes, <clears throat> specifically. I talked about these in the last video. And this is about as far as I'm going to go back here today. It takes about 12, 15 minutes to get back here. And I just wanted to check this area for chanterelles, but I don't see anything. Um, but yeah, this is an old dried up oxbow lake. If you've never heard of an oxbow lake, look it up. It's a really cool from topographic phenomenon that happens in these floodplains. Like I said, I, I talked about this on my last video, so I'm not going to go into any more depth, but I think that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to go back to my house, and my laptop came in yesterday, so I can start stitching together footage. I've been having to rely on my friend, and I can't really pay him much right now. So I'm glad I got that. Um, and I'm going to go film the orchard I planted about five years ago at my mom's house. So keep an eye out for that, and that'll be it for today. Happy foraging. <laughs>